Hey guys, how you doing this evening? It's Double Wide Six, and I've got a small project going on in the garage. I'm working on a snow blower, it's like a track drive, and the problem is one of the sides, the track isn't working. So we're gonna take a look at that tonight. So this is the snow blower. It's a 30 inch, 10 horsepower Troy built storm. I believe these are sold at Lowe's, um, but anyhow, we're going to pick it up into the service position, and we're going to try and take a look in here to see what's going on with it. Okay, so all I know is when I pull on this lever, this cable's connected, it's moving, and when we pull on the other lever, same thing, cable's definitely moving. So that's why I think we need to get inside here. There's also, I'm pretty sure, a belt on here. But I know the belt's connected unless there's two belts, but because one side's working, so that, that indicates that the, the drive belt's on there. So there's a pan underneath. I can see we're already missing one of these bolts, but we're going to pull that off and look in here and see if we see anything. All right, guys. So we'll pull this pan. I don't know if the customer had this thing off or not. Sometimes, most of the time, people don't even look at stuff before they call me. You know, it could be something really easy. I see this belt right here is uh, cracked, so we're going to need a new belt. And. I'm just looking in here at this drive pulley and I see a chain that's that's loose here so uh, looks like this chains just off the sprocket I, I can see that this looks like a home fix in here I see a hose clamp up in there so someone was in here I don't know if it was the guy that I'm fixing it for or if he bought this used off someone that pieced it together. Now, here's the good news. This is from Canada, just like Bruce Pender and Steve from Steve's Small Engine Saloon. Now, if you look in here, you see these hose clamps, and that can't be factory. So we'll take a look a little closer in there. Okay, so I'll bring you guys in, and this is what I was talking about with the hose clamp. There's a hose clamp here and a hose clamp here, and that's what's holding this cog in place. Now, these are loose, so there's also this... I don't know if they just couldn't get on the snap the snap ring, there's supposed to be a snap ring that goes in here and this this uh, washer and this snap ring go over here so I'm gonna have to try and push that over and get those snapped on so then I could take off these things and here's the main problem this chain over here is off the sprocket but if we look at these teeth these teeth are worn down you can see on this outside left edge it's a little bit higher and it's they're cut down pretty deep so we're going to need a new sprocket here and if you look in here this end this whole shaft I don't know if you can see that it's moving because the bushing down in here is, is done gone about half a bushing left so from what I could tell we need to get a bushing down here we need to get this gear and we need to get that snap ring on there. I could put that snap ring on there tonight. So we'll see what that looks like. I'm going to start just by pulling those springs off, or those clamps off. Okay, guys. So I was taking a look at this thing, and there's a groove here where the snap ring is supposed to go, but the, the groove is worn out, and the snap ring is not going to hold. This is broken, so... I'm just going to remove that ring. We don't need that. 
and there's a snap ring on here that hopefully it can just snip or snap off so there we go that got rid of that and instead of using those clamps I want something that will hold kind of permanently now this needs to spin so I was thinking I could just weld it on there but this needs to spin so I can't weld it to the shaft so what I decided is I found this this is a electrical connector it holds a post like an electrical post to a wall or a, a pipe that an electrical line runs through and I'm thinking I'll, I'll put that right on there and I'll weld this edge over here by my finger um, and I think that'll hold it nice and be uh, very s secure and maybe I'll put it on this way so I can weld it like that so I'm going to start just by snipping off the end top band side. So here's my piece. I'm just going to try and curve it around a little bit just to sort of tighten up the bend. So I got it bent and I'm going to put this thing on here, hopefully. There we go. So that snapped on there pretty well. and. Now what I can do is actually rotate this thing a little bit. And that's all it rotates. There we go. And I'm just going to make sure it's lined up with that keyway where the snap ring was. That right there looks good. Just gonna straighten it out. Camera's in my way. All right, I would say that's right where we want that. I got that tacked on there pretty well, spinning around for you. Several good sized tacks. And uh, that, that's going to do good. And I'm not going to need to buy that shaft or take any of that stuff apart. So at this point, all I got to do is remove this, get the plastic bushing, and uh, this thing should be back in business. So we're going to remove that bad sprocket. So I'm going to start by removing this nut here. At least I think I am. That was close. Just barely pinched my finger there. Alright. So there's a washer, a nut. And then this plastic cog, it's a good thing this thing's plastic because if this inner gear was metal, it'd be rusted on there. <sighs> All right. All right, so this is nice and free, and we're not going to be able to get the gear out of there because it's hitting, but there's two half-inch bolts here that I should be able, I could probably just remove one of them, and this one up here looks a little bit easier to get to. Alright, that one's out. There's another one down under here. I'm going to just try and loosen that one. I'm 
there are some different settings. I'm going to see if this moves in or out here. There we go. Looks like it's just going to squeak by, I hope. Loose, but there's not enough room. And this gear is welded on to the shaft. So I got to loosen up this to kind of pull it away a little bit. I'm going to pull this all the way out. Looks like I'll be able to get it now. Maybe. All right, there we go. Somewhere is some spring pressure on this thing. Can't quite see where. But regardless, we got our part. And these are the gears. You can see how they're really worn. Yeah, I, I, they're pretty beat. And what's going to happen is if you put it back on, it's going to pop off. And then it's going to wind up back in my shop. So we'll order up this part. I don't know how much it's going to be. But hopefully when we get back to this video, I have the part. Okay, guys. So it's a day later here. And I got my parts. And <clears throat> we're going to start out with this uh, bushing. So I'm going to put a little bit of grease on it. set this in here and there's a shoulder washer and a nut yeah anyhow um, I recently became a stem stens dealer because um, I'm in Pennsylvania and they can actually get my parts to me if they ship them out by if I order them by like 2 or 2 30 I'll have them the next day so <clears throat> That's pretty nice, and they carry a lot of parts and all that. And I'm curious how many of you guys are a member of the STEMS community. You can let me know down below. This actually... Yeah, oh, I was going to say it felt stripped, but right now it's just locking. All right, I got this uh, spinning here, so I'm going to have to put a vice grip on it. So I thought it was stripped, but actually this axle here was spinning. So I'm going to try and hold on to that with a vice grip. And we'll snug it up. Good. So I got the uh, axle here. Uh, so this is the sprocket and shaft, and you can see it has full teeth. This is the way it comes, it's welded like that. So, we'll lube it up a little bit. I've been using this uh, peen grease. It goes on sort of like a penetrating oil and then it thickens up. Should be good. I want to be careful not to get that on the disc. 
So, let's see if we can drop this thing in here. Kind of had to maneuver it last time. There we go. If it came off, it should go back on. Okay. So I'm ready to put on the chain here. Got the sprocket all set, and you want to make sure that this plate is on the inside of the sheet metal, which mine is. That way it matches the other side. And as far as the sprocket goes, I'm going to push it all the way in and try and get the chain on there. So this should move forward with some pressure. We'll get our chain started. There we go. That looks pretty good. A little tight getting in here. Using a uh, flex head wrench ratchet. This one's alright, but the, the bottom one's really tight. So I don't want to tighten the top one all the way up until I get the bottom one started. So we're on to the track, and if you haven't figured it out, these track snow blowers that are a bit tougher to work on than the wheeled snow blowers. And I don't see too many of the track ones. I do see you know some of these MTD machines and some Hondas. And I'll tell you what, the Hondas, they are great snow blowers, but they are tricky to work on. I got one that I serviced for a lady. She has a Honda tractor, which is real nice, liquid cooled. And she has a snow blower that's a Honda. And it's all uh, hydrostatic, real nice machine. And luckily for her, uh, she usually just needs a tune up. It doesn't really require much. Now you got to be careful with these tracks. They are directional and these little triangles are going to be pointing forward. And there's a bolt down here, a J hook, which you got to loosen. So we'll go the right away, hopefully. Dead battery. There it goes. That thing was just stuck. See what I did? Belts on backwards. Nothing's ever easy. Especially when the whole world's watching. Try that again. Okay, so the top one's locked in here. And now the bottom one. So it's really not that hard to do, but you gotta pay attention. One of the things I can tell you is that this top one or the back one is splined and the bottom one just isn't. It just uh, slips on a pipe. So these are two different cogs. So that's how you do that. 
Let me tighten this guy back up to where it was. This is a tensioner. About right. Now we're going to put on the belly plate, and there are three three-eighth inch bolts, so I'm going to have to find another one. This one's stripped, so I'll put something bigger in. So I found one that's one size bigger. Fortunately, it has a half inch head, but it's gonna do the job. And these, these bolts I always keep when I take apart tractors. And it's one of the bolts that just holds the sheet metal to the frame on a tractor or even the frame parts. They're self-tapping and they're really handy for things like this. This plate goes, I guess, like that, yep. So there's four bolts for this, one, two, three, four on each side, and I know that there were some missing bolts on this as well. He's only got three of them. Well, guys, next day here, uh, I got everything back together. It took a little while. There were a lot of bolts missing. Uh, a little bit finicky to work on these track uh, snow blowers. A lot more parts than just the wheel drive. But uh, I got everything going. I cleaned the carburetor. I changed the oil. I found, uh, I did see a lot of little metal particulate in the oil. So that didn't look good, but I went ahead and changed it. The starter didn't engage, it was missing a bolt. I got that adjusted, uh, and I replaced all the missing bolts, which were about 15 bolts on this thing. So uh, we got it running. I'm gonna show you guys, I'll start it up, and uh, you can see the tracks moving. Oh, I also set the RPM, it was running too fast. And that's part of the reason I think that there was some metal in the uh, oil, just a little bit, but it, regardless, it didn't look good. And I flipped this uh, skid shoe for him. All right, guys, as you can see, I got it running. It really is running nice, which is good. A lot of times you have to fine tune things. And luckily with this one, with all the panels, missing bolts, chains, sprockets, I got it out here and, you know, after I had the carburetor cleaned, everything worked 
perfect just as it should so I didn't have to go back and take anything apart so I'm real happy about that these uh, track drives are a little bit tricky and as you drive if you there's a little lever on the handle you can pull it it'll go left you pull the other one it'll go right and all that stuff is tricky to adjust and luckily I didn't have to get into all that everything seems to be tracking just perfect so anyhow guys I'd like to thank you because uh, I hit a recent milestone here I have 100k subscribers and that's from you guys so thanks for watching you'll have to let me know if you've ever worked on any of these track drive units I don't see too many of them but uh, I do work on them and they can be a pain so remember that when you're buying a snowblower it's gonna cost a lot more money to fix a snowblower that's track drive compared to a wheel one thanks for watching guys have a good one double wide six